This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. This is a video I filmed back in 2016. I'm showing you this because I want you to know you don't need a pro camera to start filmmaking. Don't trust me? This is Steven Soderbergh filming a movie with one of these. Originally, this video was intended as a shopping list for beginner filmmakers. But as the idea developed, I realized you don't need to buy anything. Today, let's take a look at some high concept movies that you too may have the resources to make. Features made on phones, webcams, and also some extreme examples. The whole thing is shot with the camera on the back of the Toyota Prius. It's going to be wild. This video is dedicated to people with a filmmaking dream who are too intimidated to get started. You don't need a camera to start filmmaking. All you need is some creativity. When people think of movies with bad cameras, they think of found footage. But that's just too easy. These days, you have a camera in your pocket that's good enough to make a feature film. Unseen is probably the most well-known example of this format. Directed by Steven Soderbergh of Ocean's Eleven fame, this 2018 low-budget horror film tells the story of a woman trapped in a psychiatric hospital, slowly being convinced that she might actually be crazy. And its narrative is made more engaging by the aesthetic of a smartphone camera. Look at that dirty color palette, that grainy image. Phone cameras are notoriously sensitive to these ugly colors, like the green tint you get in a public bathroom. But in this hospital, it feels appropriate, both sterile and sickly. Now, look at the wide-angle composition. Framing close-ups like this is unflattering. The wide angle feels realistic like a documentary, yet also off-kilter. This conflict between real and surreal perfectly encapsulates the premise of the film. Is she really insane? But if it's too extreme, you can also go in the opposite direction. Yes, this is shot on an iPhone. I Play With The Phrase Each Other is a 2013 film about a young man moving to a big city and subsequently being stranded there. This lo-fi, mid-20th century monochrome look can only be described as cinematic. Presumably it was shot like this. Still impressive though. The cinematography is intimate and still, but most importantly, it's fitting. Not only was it shot on an iPhone, the entire film is also nothing but phone calls. The presence of phones throughout its production and narrative adds to it a sense of urban life, perfect for a story about drifting in the city. Finally, there is Tangerine. Tangerine is a 2015 indie comedy about a transgender sex worker's rampage through Los Angeles trying to find her cheating boyfriend. Smartphones often produce highly saturated images, and this film embraces that. It's wide, bold, colorful, and energetic, bringing in both the energy of the streets of LA as well as the chaos of it. It has some seriously grainy footage, yet none of it detracts from the film's undeniable beauty. This craziness is what brings the story to life. Just the image alone makes us feel both the stress and the mayhem the sex workers face. The same story would lose all of its impacts if it's shot on a cinema camera. Sure, they look different than a quote-unquote real movie. But what's wrong with having a personality? While all these films are good, none of them is the definitive smartphone movie yet. Unlike the found footage genre, there has yet to be a successful smartphone movie that marries its camera with its plot to a high degree. This could be an opportunity. 
While today we focus almost exclusively on fiction, documentaries and non-fictions can also be experimental. Tower, for example, recounts a tragedy that happened in 1966. The film is composed mainly of this sublime rotoscope animation, like looking into vivid memories of old. And you can watch this film right now with today's sponsor, Curiosity Stream. Curiosity Stream has thousands of streamable documentaries and non-fiction TV shows encompassing topics like history, nature, technology, and more. It's not only a great way to acquire new knowledge, but their award-winning exclusives and originals are also great study material for filmmakers. Visit curiositystream.com slash cinema and use the code AXENTHECINEMA to get 25% off your annual plans. That's just $14.99 for the entire year. With such a quality catalog at such an affordable price, I know what I'm going to do this winter. So let's check out Curiosity Stream today. Even cheaper than phones, we have screen-like movies, a new film format that tells stories via a computer screen display. While some examples came before, to most people, Unfriended was the first true example of this format. Set during a Skype video chat session, this 2014 film tells the story of a group of teenagers being haunted by the ghost of a dead classmate. And you can tell Unfriended is among the first examples because its execution is hit or miss. There are good moments where the diegetic camera is brought in as a horror element. But then, most of the deaths had little to do with the format itself. The film utilizes the internet remarkably well allowing us to see both the performance and the investigation being done at the same time. But its strict adherence to the computer screen also becomes its biggest constraint. This limitation will be broken in 2018 by not one but two screenlight films that one of it unfriended in major ways. Based on true events, Profile is about a journalist that pretends to be a Muslim girl and investigates how ISIS recruits people via social networks. Just from the premise, it feels different. Instead of being a gimmick, Profile is a movie where being told in any other format would not work nearly as well. At the same time, it also takes more liberty with the screen aspect in both time and space. No longer confined to a single continuous shot, Profile spreads its story over weeks reintroducing cuts back into the format. This allows the characters to transform and develop, and is certainly a much more character-centric experience. And then there is Searching. John Cho plays a father who utilizes the internet to look for his missing daughter. Even more than profile, this is a character and emotion-based experience. Music, sound effects, zooms, cuts. This film reintroduces these techniques back into the format. Techniques that depicts a subjective experience. It is as if the camera is now inside the screen and can look around the cyberspace itself. As a result, this film feels less like we are staring at a screen and more like we are looking through the eyes of the main character. It elevates a gimmick into an emotional experience. With the COVID pandemic, screen light becomes the new hotness in town, and the landscape of the genre is rapidly shifting. Host, for example, eliminated most of the computer screen. It merely presents a clean and minimalistic impression of a user interface and the result is much cleaner. This format is just one major hit away from being the next craze, but the sensational film has yet to emerge. And the best part? All you need to hop on board, it's a webcam. And then we come to the crazy stuff. Alfred Hitchcock, Stanley Kubrick, Orson Welles. None of these guys have even thought about shooting a film on a Prius backup camera. Okay, this whole thing is just a sketch. A sketch with a joke that was already 12 years out of date when it came out. Now, I only have the trailer for this movie, but as you can see, the entire movie is filmed using a dash cam. This is Invasion 
also called Infection, a 2005 zombie thriller filmed entirely from the perspective of a cop car. So, jokes on those guys. Films from a strange perspective are actually pretty common. Unknown Visitor, for example, is a 2019 horror featurette shot entirely from the perspective of a doorbell camera. It's an inspiring piece because this is the entire cast and crew. Half of them are relatives of the director. The film has an excellent atmosphere and some amazing scares. But sadly, the story could have functioned just as well with a traditional camera setup. The camera remains a gimmick, it feels like a missed opportunity. To see a good example of utilizing its format well, let's take a look at this. Look is a 2007 film shot entirely from the perspective of surveillance cameras. In this American Beauty style comedy thriller, we get to see the secret lives of everyday people. Generous shoppers turn out to be killers, bullying victims can also be monsters themselves. With this voyeuristic perspective, sometimes with full on sensor parts, the film's images are distant yet intimate, as if you are watching things you are not supposed to and the stories become more powerful because of it. Sometimes a good film starts with a gimmick, but with a well-constructed plot, the gimmick becomes part of the story. If you look around, there are cameras all around us, many of which have their own stories waiting to be told. You don't need a pro camera to make a good movie, as long as you have good stories to tell and you can tell it in a creative way, then your film has value. We are creative artists, right? Why not take our creativity to its logical maximum? Regular viewers may be wondering why this video is so different from our usual topics on this channel. That's because I need this video for myself. For the past year, I've been writing a martial art short film, and the thought of pushing it into production is intimidating. Especially now that I have an audience, the possibility of making a movie no one sees scares me. That is, until I watch the films I talked about today. These movies are bold, loud, and expressive. Many of them are unique experiences rather than generic products. It's clear that these filmmakers have things to say, and they had an excellent time saying it. Whether or not the world chooses to listen is the world's problem. The point is, the film exists, with or without an audience. And I want my film to exist. So for this winter, this channel will slow down a bit as I prepare to be a filmmaker once again. I have stories I can't wait to tell, and hopefully my short films will exist proudly, just like the films we talked about today. <laughs>